What a great way to start the morning, man. We are excited you hope you have a, I hope you're excited to be here yourselves. I mean, this is a great way to start the morning, great way to open up the service uh, band and you guys second hour have got that even extra extra hour of sleep, right? Yeah, so you're wide awake and you're ready to go. We are really excited that you're here. And the reason we're excited is because it always is a privilege to to worship God together uh, as a church. And so we are always excited about what God is going to be doing uh, today. And our prayer is that you would just experience Him. We say this a lot, but we, it truly is our prayer that you would just experience Him in a new and a refreshing way today. And so that is our hope. That is our prayer. If you're visiting with us, uh, we just want to say a special welcome to you. When you came in, hopefully you received a little green handout. And inside that handout is a connection card. Ask that you just take a few moments and fill it out just so we have some information uh, about you. We're not going to embarrass you, make you stand up or anything like that, but we would love to send you a, just a letter or a card just saying, hey, we were glad you were with us today. Thank you for being with us today. On your way out the garage door today over in the corner is our guest services. Just drop that connection card in that basket over there and then just pick up a free gift. There's a couple of books over there that are free gifts for you of our way of just saying thank you for being with us today. Thank you for just first being with us today. Outside in the cafe area, there's always going to be water and coffee and bagels and donuts and just feel free to to bring something in here with you today we're pretty casual here we're pretty laid back and just worship with us as you just feel god leading you to worship if you just want to set take step back and just take it all in 
then you got the privilege to do that. If you want to stand and sing and clap your hands, you also have the privilege to do that today as well. And again, just experience God in just a wonderful way today. There's some announcements that you need to be aware of. I ask you just to look through the little green handout that you got and just be aware of things that are going on in our church. A couple of things I do want to make you aware of is one, next Sunday after second service, there is a youth parents meeting. Um, if you are, if you have kids that are in junior high or high school, uh, there's a meeting that Scott has uh, for us. And um, I think you said there's food available. So if I misspoke that, I apologize, Scott, have food there. Um, so there's going to be food there. Uh, sign up for that. Uh, Sign up for that just so he knows how much to order and how much to have there. Write that on your connection card. Want to be a part of the youth meeting and drop that either in our giving center over there or you can also put that in the uh, the guest services area as well. Also, the the uh, youth are selling uh, candles as an annual fundraiser. Now, there's a table set out at the end of the hallway there in our cafe area. Uh, take time to sign up for that. That's uh, their annual fundraiser that they uh, raise money. Uh, also, if you see... Uh, a high school, junior high kid around here, they should be also carrying the packets as well. So those make great gifts for loved ones, for teachers, for Sunday school teachers. They make great gifts for uh, people like that. So uh, sign up, buy a candle, make someone else's life happy as a result of buying a candle. So we are glad you're here. Go ahead and stand to your feet if you would, and just take a moment to greet somebody. Yeah. 
what you've called us to. Father, I just ask that wherever we are at as individuals, as a corporate group, that we recognize that where you're taking us, you're already in and you are working in. And I ask that our lives are something that represents you and lifts you up for your glory alone. Father, we just think that we can gather today, that we can lift you up and that we can praise you. It's in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, that we come before you. Amen. Amen. You guys can go ahead and take a seat. I want to share a song with you guys I wrote um, earlier this year in the spring. And um, <clears throat> given our topic today, talking about uh, politics and election, and I felt like this song would be uh, appropriate. I will not be silent anymore With my tongue I will wage war Cause I
Wow, has the music not just been over the top? I mean, wow. Doug, thank you again. I said to you in the first hour, thank you for bringing your gifts uh, to God and to the church and, uh, and, and really all band. Uh, I cracked a little funny in the first hour about a boy band or something like that, but it, I mean, it was kind of rocking this morning. It was great. If you have your Bible, I want you to open them to the book of Matthew with me, if you would. Matthew chapter 5. While you're finding that, let me remind you of what's happening here in this story. Jesus speaking. In fact, these are really the first words that we get from Jesus uh, as he launches his ministry. Up to this point, he spent 30 years learning his father's craft, uh, carpentry, and growing up and maturing. And now he's launching his ministry here in chapter 5, and if, if you could, you know, in this season of the year, if you, if you would let me, um, you know, a, a, what we get here is Jesus' kind of campaign theme, his message theme for his life for the next three and a half years. And so he really lays out on the front end, these are going to be what you're going to hear from me as I move through creating this army from 12 close followers in the inner circle that has now exploded a couple of thousand years later into millions of followers of Jesus. And so here's what he says. The very first words out of his mouth are to tell us about the things that are on God's radar, the things that God pays attention to, the, the things that touch the heart of God the deepest. And he said, God blesses those who mourn. God blesses those. He, 
He sees after those. He reaches out to those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. And, and he begins to describe life experiences. And then he shifts from there and he looks at his followers then and I think by extension now and declares these words in verse 15. He says, you are the light, you are the salt of the earth. The salt loses its saltiness. How is it ever going to be made salty again? It's, it's literally good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled by men. It says, you are the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill can't be hidden. Neither do people light a candle and put it under a bowl or a basket, but rather they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone around them. So let your light so shine before men that they would see your good works, and they would glorify your Father who is in heaven. Just keep that open and pray with me. Father God, as only you can in a supernatural way, would you... Would you uh, cause your Holy Spirit to take the words from the pages of Scripture and reveal your heart to us in these moments? Let us see your heart beat on these early words in the ministry of your Son, Jesus. And we pray this in His name. Amen. Which of these issues do you care about? What if you could influence how they were legislated? What if you could impact the outcome of the next election? What if you could change the course of America? Have you noticed we're in election season? Anybody in here besides me noticed? Vicki and I had some light, uh, lightning run in on our home here uh, several weeks ago in one of the storms that came through, and this particular storm decided that there were several things around the house that we just didn't need anymore. A couple of TVs and, you know, some satellite equipment, and uh, among them were our phone system, and so... Uh, our answering machine and phone system all got taken out through that lightning strike. So really for about a week and a half, uh, we, we just didn't have any phones at home. And we still had our cell phones, but we didn't have any phones home. And, and we were in Walmart here, I don't know, a week or so, a week and a half, maybe two weeks ago. And, and they had some phones there on the show. We, you know, we really ought to replace those and get our answering machine back up. Uh, so that we'd have that at the house for, for calls that come to the house. And I am so glad we did. To think of all of the calls that we would have missed. There's just something about coming home from a hard day at work and seeing the light flashing on the machine, you know, three messages, four messages, and then hit that button, and there is someone calling you to tell you about their campaign for Senate or for the presidency or for the legislature. I mean, we would have missed all of those calls. Yeah, I've kind of thought about that in the same way. I, you know, it, and it's not, it's, not the, uh, it, it's not that I don't want to know. I, I mean, the reality is I, it's not that, that I don't want them to call me or to stop me and tell me about what they stand for and, and, and who they are and, and what's important to them and their values. It, it's that they seem to want to tell me what the other person stands for. <laughs> And what the other person's values are, that, that, that's, where, that's where I get a little bit crossed up. I don't know about you, but that, that part becomes a little annoying. I, I read about a couple of candidates that were in a coffee shop together. You know, they were both campaigning. And, and as they left the shop, uh, one of the guys turned to the other one and he said, you know, I'm going to win this election. And the reason I'm going to win this election is because I just have a personal touch with people. I, I'm, I'm just good with people. For example, I, I, I just left a significant tip on the table for the waitress there and, and, and ask her to vote for me. The other candidate looked and said, yeah, I, I, I get that. Um, I, I, I do the same thing pretty much when, when I go. I, I usually leave a nickel 
and then give them your name and ask them to vote for me. <laughs> and I've kind of experienced that just, just a little bit. You know, that kind of seems to be the nature of most of the ads that, that come our way. I, I don't know if, uh, if you got an opportunity to, to watch any of the presidential debates, for example. Uh, the three presidential debates and the vice presidential debate. I, I got in on several pieces of those. And, and then, of course, you know, I don't worry so much about watching the debates because it's really more helpful for me if I just kind of wait until after they're done. And then I can click over and just see what they really said. I, I wouldn't be you know, smart enough to be able to listen to them directly. So the, the commentators afterwards are always so helpful in saying, you know, here's what they meant and here's what they said and, they, and that's what this means. And, and I, I appreciate that so much. I, I ran across this. In fact, I had a coworker that sent me this and I, I thought it was pretty cute. Uh, and, and at the risk of offending folks this morning, and I, I, I trust that I won't, but at the risk, of the, the person put together a little montage of the vice presidential uh, debate, and uh, I, I thought it was, I found it very helpful. I thought maybe you might too as well. Let's just take a, listen, uh, take a look this morning. Stuff. This president does it muff. We've got to tackle this debt crisis before it tackles us. Do we think America should promote global peace? Or should we chill out at home with the bowl across the weeds? We will not allow the Iranians to get a nuclear weapon. They're moving fast toward a nuclear weapon. They're sending the set of fugitives as they go a weapon to put you right into. They are not changing their mind. That's what we have to do is change their mind. You have to have the eye to us change their minds. What we don't want to do is lose the gains we got in Afghanistan. Fellas, we're leaving. We've trained you. We're leaving. We don't want to give our allies reason to trust us less. Let's all calm down a little here. Step up. We trained you. We're leaving. Their ideas are old. This president does it much. We've got to tackle this debt crisis before it tackles us. Tell us how you straighten the budget out. And speak on an eighth grade level so we know what you're talking about. They talk about this recession and fell out of the sky like, oh my goodness, where did it come from? It came from this man voting to put two hours in the credit card. Oh, we're going in the wrong direction. Look at where we are. We face a very big choice. What kind of country are we going to be? What kind of country are we going to give our kids? What kind of country? What kind of country? My friend recently said 30% of people are takers. These people are my mom and dad. These people are my neighbors. Thumbs up and it last cards. Now's your final chance to get yourself hard. The calendar works the same every year. It does work the same every year. It's warm or it's not. I hope that wasn't offensive to you, and if it was, you know, shoot me an email, tturner at mynorthbridge.org, and you know, I'll be happy to reply to you. You reach a certain point about this time in which, you know, you just really, I don't know, you just kind of want to shut it off and turn it off and hit the mute button and say, go away, and, and hide in a corner. I, I know that. Here's what I want to say to you this morning. From the word of God, hear what Jesus says as he looks at you and me 2,000 years later and says, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. Do not, here, if you don't get anything else this morning, get this. Do not become so numb by the lead up to Tuesday that you shut down, turn off, go away, and do not engage in the process that's before us. I find it fascinating 
that at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry, he thought this issue of being reminded that the people who follow after him are salt and light, that he would, he would put that right in the front end of his very first message to us about what he came for. I think it means that you and I live with some risk. We are at risk of, of removing the influence that God has given us, of, of backing away and just kind of stepping back from the very influence that he gave us. He, he said, you are the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill can't be hidden. And how silly, Jesus says, would it be for someone to light a light and then cover it up with a bowl? All through Jesus' teaching, he reminds us that we live in a dark world. That we live in a land that cannot see God, cannot understand the ways of God, cannot discern the heart of God. I mean, Scripture is crystal clear on that point. Those who are not followers of Jesus Christ can't know the mind and heart of God. It is His followers, it is those who have come into relationship with Him through personal faith that have the ability to understand God's ways and to grow into God's heart and to know what His thinking, what's of importance to Him. And so He says, that's why you are the light of the world. I, I, just, I, I just want to remind us of what this contrast that Jesus paints is. I'm going to ask Sherry, just, if she would, just to kind of pull the lights down for a moment. Jesus declares that as we go through our day, day by day, that we live in darkness. That all around us, those who don't know God cannot see the ways of God. That's why he uses this metaphor. Why would I make you light of the world and then expect you to hide, to disconnect, to draw away? Oh, I know you're weary in this particular season. You get tired of hearing the robocalls and the campaign flyers and the television ads, but, but it's almost like the, the heart of God was looking down through the generations to you and me to say, don't forget, you are the light. You are the way. Don't remove your influence. It's not that we, and, and notice this in this passage, it's not that we have to gin up the influence. Okay? We, we don't create the influence. We are already given that influence. Jesus says, I made you the light of the world. People will know my heart through you. They will learn my ways through you. They will come to know what matters most to me through you. You already have that influence. And it's only as we get weary, I know, get tired, get frustrated, get all confused by all of the rhetoric and all the campaign, particularly in these seasons of the year, and we find ourselves drawing away. And Jesus says, if you do, then how will they see? What does this mean on a practical level? What does it mean come these seasons of the year? I mean, you know, we get a couple of times a year, we get opportunities to vote every year, a couple of times a year. There are, there are generally elections somewhere around this. But then every you know, four years, you know, we, we get into one of these really big cycles where from the very top leadership all the way down, there are decisions to be made, and candidates to be chosen, and issues to be decided. What does it mean to be the influence that God made us to be? C can I tell you, at the very baseline, at the very baseline, it means to be engaged and be informed. I mean, it means to be aware of what options there are, of who candidates are, of what decisions are to be made and what might choices for those be to be informed. You, you can't go anywhere. This morning I got up and opened the paper early this morning and, and there, right there in the news leader, if you need a place to go, just go to the website for a news leader. Just promote our, our local paper or go to any of the media outlets and they all have sample ballots on them and see what it is that are to be decided. What are the offices? Who are the candidates? Every one of those candidates have websites and have information about themselves. Who are they? What do they stand for? What are their values? What do they say? Bring that with your mind and, and heart for God 
uh, in prayer before him? And, and, and what are the issues? What are the propositions? And what are the proposals that, to be decided? No, it, at a very baseline, be informed. Beyond that, maybe there's, maybe there's something that touches a chord with you. Maybe there's something that you feel pretty strong about. Man, I, I, would, say, I would say engage. Maybe there's someone that you need to make some phone calls for or man some phone bank or help with some particular candidate who aligns with your values. Engage. Get involved. You are why? Because you're the light. And all those that don't follow after me are living in darkness. And the only way they will know the heart of God, the only way God's heart comes to bear on a land, on a people, on a society, is as the light shines out. Maybe you need to run for office. I, mo many of you know, most of you know, a number of years ago, I mean, I've never had any aspirations for that. But I, I was in conversation and some folks brought up and, and I decided, well, I, you know, I, not because I thought there was any big problems, but because I I've, I've so highly valued uh, the public education system, I decided to run for our local school board uh, in, uh, in Willard. And uh, my, both my children were, ha have grown up to become teachers, and, and because I just value that culture and value those people, I, I threw that out, threw my name in the hat, and I think that first round there were like six of us on the ballot or seven or something like that, and there were a couple of spots. And, you know, the most brutal part of that whole thing was to drive down the road and see my name on a sign someplace. I just absolutely hated that. I despised that part. But maybe some need to do that. I, I don't know. I'm going to ask Jake uh, Wilburn to come up here. I don't know if some of you are aware that even in this election cycle, we have one of our own who has done that very thing, who has thrown his hat into the ring. And uh, I, I want you to know right up front, we're, we're not here to talk about platforms. And I, I am incredibly proud of this young 27-year-old husband and dad. And I wanted you to share my pride in case you didn't know that. Pastor Tony and, and John and I both talked about that. Uh, but Jake is a candidate on the ballot for the new 130th legislative district that takes in, uh, in, how, in the Missouri House of Representatives, in the Missouri House uh, Legislature, uh, that takes in Willard and Republic and Bodark and Ash Grove and that whole area over there. There's a little carved out place. And Jake, we're proud of you. I mean, we're incredibly proud of you because, I, you know, I just see in you taking this salt and light thing to heart. And, and I want to ask you a, a little bit about that process to help us. I, I know you just didn't wake up one morning and have an interest in politics. Take us back a ways. How did this begin with you? What, 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 was, that, what was that like? What was the genesis of this journey for you? Well, I, I wasn't really into politics in, I don't know, late high school and... Uh, you know, when I was in the military, I kind of started thinking, it's like, okay, well, I'm here, we're putting ourselves at risk, and what is, is it exactly that I'm putting myself at risk for? I mean, what, what is it that we are physically fighting for? And so uh, I started looking into the issues a little bit, and, uh, you know, as people talk politics around the office, and, you know, you ask people, well, I believe in this and that, and I said, well, why? And then that's kind of where the conversation ends. A lot of people really can't tell you why they believe what they believe. And I said, I don't want to be that way. If I'm going to be fighting for something and if, and if I'm going to be able to speak up and have an opinion, I need to know why I have this opinion. And when I started going down that rabbit hole, I mean, there's issues within issues within issues, and, and this connects to that. And um, So I really started becoming very politically aware, and uh, I, I'm definitely – a political nerd. I mean, I that's what I do. That's what I I read about and research. And so, uh, two years ago in 2010, when we had the midterm elections, I I had already kind of like looked at the ballot and I went to go vote. And something that really bothered me was there was only one candidate on the ballot for state representative. So out of a district of 25,000 some odd people, one person, one person stood up and said okay, you know what, I'd be willing to do it. And he didn't even have to go vote that day. He could have just sent his mom to go do it or, you know, whatever. It, it, it was a foregone conclusion that he was going to win. Mm -hmm. And I said, there ought to be more options. Somebody needs to stand up and, and at least have another voice. Mm -hmm. uh, and the more I thought about it, it really started weighing on me, and I thought, you know, it might as well be me. I, I really don't think anyone else is going to do it. And so I might as well put myself out there and, and go ahead, win, lose, or draw. 
I'll, I'll put myself out there and be another choice for the, for the voters and try to do something about it. So give us a little bit of inside baseball. You've been a candidate now uh, for the uh, uh, state legislature for a couple of months, three, I don't know when that sign up period was, but uh, you know, what's that experience been like for, for you? How, uh, we talked a little bit about this in the first hour. Just, just w what have you experienced? How, uh, give us some insight to that. Well, it's been a, it's been a pretty uh, crazy roller coaster, and, uh, and y you talk to a lot of people either who are, are very informed, and there's a lot of those people that are very, very informed, and uh, they really want to dig deep into what you believe, and then there's other people who just are very, very surface level. And, and so, uh, you know, what I, what I would encourage everybody is when you do, when you vote on Tuesday, to take your vote very, very seriously. I mean, this isn't something that, uh, you know, you just should go in there and guess. I mean, there are millions of people that went to an early grave so that on Tuesday you could go and make your choice. Yeah. So this isn't something that, to take lightly. And if, you know, I'm not saying don't go vote, but if, if you don't know who you want for dog catcher, then leave it blank because there's a lot of people who, you know, are, are feel very passionately about issues and know, and your vote counts just as much as my vote or as his vote or as her vote. Mm -hmm. And so if, if you don't know about a subject, don't vote. But no, I mean, you can, like you were saying, you can look up sample ballots and you know what, throw away the TV ads and, and throw away all the robo calls and just kind of forget that stuff for a minute. Mm -hmm. And go online. There's only 48 hours left till the election. So if, if you're you're like, okay, I, you know, we're almost there. I'm so sick of it. You, you just it's crunch time. 48 hours. Get on the internet and you can look up all sides of an issue and you can and you can research it. So that way, when you go in the ballot box, there's no surprises and you know as a, as from where you stand and where your convictions are how to vote on an issue. Yeah. Well, one of the primary reasons that I that I just wanted uh, Jake to to be up here this morning is, is because. As I said a moment ago, uh, I'm incredibly proud of a 27-year-old dad and husband that says, yep, I, I want to be salt and light. And so I'll, I'll, I'll volunteer. I, I'll, I'll put my name on that ballot. Oh, there's a fair amount of risk in that. Uh, I suspect you've had some interesting conversations. I know that last week there was an article in the News Leader that uh, referred back to your Navy experience when, and I think it was a year and a half or so ago when Pastor Tony had you on the platform, we were doing a counter counterculture series and one of the topics was integrity. And Pastor Tony interviewed uh, uh, Jake about his military experience and some trials and tribulations and difficulties that, that he faced and some of those bubbled back up sure. uh, as you put your name out there. And I, I read that article in News Leader. By the way, I didn't say this in the first hour, but I read the whole article. I thought the uh, uh, this is a little inside base. You can be quiet. You can just turn off if you want for a moment. But the but the, but the young man, the other gentleman that uh, offered the quote to the news leader that uh, had received your apology, I thought that was really powerful and, and really really cool. And those of you that will remember that, the, the, one of the gentlemen that that Jake was in, involved with and had felt mistreated from Jake, uh, pretty strong made a pretty strong statement in that article in the news leader about. Uh, how much he appreciated and valued the apology and, and uh, Jake coming to him and, and just saw Jake as a man of integrity, which, which I just thought was really cool. Uh, I, I wanted you to be aware of that. Here's the deal. All of us are wired differently. There's a few of us that are, uh, what did you say, nerd? I think geek was the word I used in the first yeah, hour. Nerd, nerd is your word. Uh, right. We'll stay with your word. You know. there, there are a few probably that are little political junkies. Uh, that, that like to engage in that kind of stuff and want to be informed to you know to an nth degree and, and, and then most of us most of us just want to know enough that, that what do we what do we have to know because it just gets so overwhelming and that was try, uh, tr what I was trying to do in the first part of this is just demonstrate the overwhelming nutsness of this whole process but we cannot disconnect because of it. We can't turn off because of it. We have to engage. We have to be salt and light. And I, and I want to just hold Jake up as an example of what that looks like. And then I wanted to ask him, because he is inside in, in this process, how do we pray for him and as uh, him as a representative of all of the candidates who have put themselves out there? And, and I, we get jaundiced views of them, I know, because we, we hear the commercials and, we, and it all seems like chaotic craziness, but, but it's high risk 
And it's a big deal. It's high impact. They put their lives on hold to do that kind of thing. How do we pray for you and by representation, all of those who are candidates uh, on the ballots? How would you tell us to pray for them? Well, uh, two things. The, the first thing is, is you, um, to, to pray for yourselves as voters because uh, whatever happens Wednesday morning when, when you wake up and look at all the results, uh, you know, God is in control of all of it. So if, if they, wherever you fall in between anarchy and communism, if it doesn't go your way, uh, God is still in control. And so if your, your guy in whatever race or your whatever issue doesn't come out the way you want it, God is still in control of that, and, and we can take peace knowing that it's, it's going to be okay. And the second thing is for the candidates, you know, as, as soon as I put my name on the ballot, I got this uh, nice letter from an organization, and you know, they give you a little survey and it says, uh, you know, check here if you want to save the world and check here if you have no morals and are a horrible person. And then send us back what you think. And so, I mean, I've got to stack this high from every interest group that you could ever think of and have never heard of that wants to, you know, ha you commit and, and they say, okay, if you support us, we'll put our weight behind you. But if you don't, they threaten you. Yeah. And so it's, it's very easy now for me to see, having been a part of this process, how easy it is and how tempting it is to, to cater to this group or that group and have just become so corrupted. I mean, I, I am still, this is my first run, and you know, guys who have been in this for years and years and years had a, lot, a chance to talk to a lot of current legislatures and other people in office. And it's crazy how, how many directions they're getting ripped apart. And the so pressure they feel. It would be mm -hmm. so, uh, just pray for them to stick to their core convictions and to not forget who they are and, and what it is that they are fighting for. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, it's, it's really easy to give in and become, and become corrupted and become these people that we all kind of get jaded to. Um, so pray for that strength that they will hold on to their moral fiber and remember whatever their affiliation is that they will hold true to that. Yeah, that's great. And I want us to do that, church, right now. I, uh, Jake, I want you just to stand down here. And, and I want to pray for Jake, uh, and, and, I, and by extension, by representation, every candidate on the ballot uh, this Tuesday. And I want you to join me, church. I'm going to voice a prayer for us, but, but you just, um, you know, if I say something that resonates with your heart, then, then with a whisper, with a voice, I don't care, you know, yes, God, amen. And, and let's just join together to pray for these men and women who are on the ballot for uh, this Tuesday. Pray with me. God, um, we count it such a honor that you chose for us to live in this land with the great freedoms and liberty that we enjoy and the ability to, to be salt and light uh, to an extent that many, many people don't have. Uh, we, we don't want to take that for granted. Father, and I thank you today for Jake and for his precious family and, and every person, every man and every woman who is on a ballot running for an office, volunteering to represent us. We pray, God, for, uh, first of all, for ourselves, as G Jake has uh, uh, admonished us, that you will help us to get to know them as best we can and who they are and what they value and what they stand for. Uh, we pray, God, for them as they're being pulled in so many different directions. And it's, it's so interesting to hear, uh, for us to hear someone who's in the middle of that, who's, who's experiencing that firsthand, the, the directions, the pressures that they feel. I pray, Father, you'll just, if, if they know you, that you will draw them close, that you will give them a hedge of protection. Uh, I pray, God, if they don't know you, that this would be an opportunity when they would be influenced by those around them that do and that they would come to be aware of your love and your heart and your plan and your ways. We, we trust you, God, and uh, we want to do everything that you call us to do, to do our part, but in the end, we trust you. Thank you for Jake. Thank you for these men and women. We place them into your care. In Jesus' name, everyone agreed and said, Amen. Amen. Will you express appreciation, not just for being in here this morning, but for putting himself out there. And, uh, you know, I, I, just, I just can't value that enough. And uh, I love, love Jake's heart. And I knew what you would hear from him. I mean, clearly this wasn't about platforms or issues. or th th This was about being, being light. This was about recognizing 
that we have been ordained by God to be light in a dark world. And that it's not really a choice or something we generate. It's what God has declared. The question is, will we run from that? Will we remove our influence? Will we put a bowl over ourselves? But there's another risk that Jesus surfaces in this teaching. It's not just that we would remove our influence and disengage and become, you know, just uh, uh, numb to the whole process, but it's also that we would be ineffective, that we would lose our effectiveness. He, he switches from this light metaphor to the salt metaphor. You are the salt of the earth. Think about salt for a moment. Salt is an incredibly powerful element. I, I mean, it's just, it just takes just a little bit of salt to make a huge impact. Let me say that again for my wife's benefit. It takes just a little bit. We put salt on solid ice when we want to break it apart and make it melt away. Jesus says, you are what I place in the world to break away the hardness and the coldness of those who don't know me. Salt penetrates. It's powerful. It's potent stuff. And when we, I, I, I didn't prompt Jay to say that, but I loved his moment when he said, you know, when you go to the pole and, and you see a, jo a dog catcher and you don't know which dog catcher, and obviously we're being, you know, a, a little bit silly there, but you don't know and then don't vote. You know what? I think that's almost the mind of Jesus because he's declaring, don't lose your effectiveness. It's one thing to try to be light, but it's another thing to be effective, to be informed, to be knowledgeable, to be wise. Figure out what the choices are. And who would most importantly align with the heart of God? Who would be closest to the way I think God's heart beats on matters that matter to Him? It's to be informed. It's to be knowledgeable. I'm not asking you to become a, you know, a CNN junkie or a Fox News junkie or uh, 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 get on your favorite web. I'm not asking you to, to live in that world. But I think God is saying to us, you are the light and the salt. Be light and be effective. Be salt that is effective. Jesus you know, in verse 13, when he declares, if we lose, he, he, he says, you're the, you're the salt of the earth. And then he quickly, he quickly jumps to this. If a salt loses its saltiness, what good is it? Wow. Christ followers. You're salt of this earth. And if a salt loses its saltiness, what good are you? I've placed you here to have an influence and to be effective in that influence so that the world can see my ways in my heart. They'll be blind and in darkness without it. But here's the last thing. I think Jesus is trying to teach folks of his day and of our day that we're at risk of, of removing our influence, of losing our effectiveness and denying God's sovereignty. Jake's touched on this when he was sharing. I thought, he, I, was, I thought I was going to have to make him quiet because he was going to preach my message. We get down to the very end of this, the end of verse 16. So let your light so shine before men that they may see you and glorify God. That they may see you and glorify God. It is through you that they will see God. It is through the choices you make, the behaviors that you demonstrate that they will see God. Our actions, our voice, our influence declares the sovereignty of God. It's only when we hide, when we disconnect, when we turn off, we say, oh, that's over my head, or that confuses me, or I don't know what to do, or uh, that, we, that we really literally deny the sovereignty of God and being in control. Do you think God can take your mind and help you to discern His ways in a ballot booth? Yeah. You know the answer. Absolutely He can. When we stand for biblical principles on things that matter to God, we declare the sovereignty of God and we reflect Him and we honor Him. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Listen, it, it, it doesn't matter what the outcome is. I want you to hear this. Jake said it well. It doesn't matter really what the outcome is. 
Whatever happens on, Wednesday, on Tuesday night, whatever the headline is on Wednesday morning, God will still be God. Am I right? What matters is whether we acknowledge Him in the process. What matters is whether we choose to be salt and light. What matters is whether we reflect the heart of God to a lost world. I'm so tired of hearing that the number one issue among Americans is the economy. Somehow, I just can't envision my God in heaven wringing His hands, how are we going to get the economy back? I just don't see God stressed out over how do we create jobs? Those are not the things when I read this that, that touch and penetrate the heart of God. I think God calls for us to recognize that we live in a dark land who are going to have conversation and chatter that doesn't necessarily reflect Him. But because we do know Him, and we do understand the things that matter to God. On that basis, we can reflect His heart when we go into incredible opportunities like voting. I mean, this salt and light thing is a 365, 24-7 uh, deal. I mean, it, 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 it's always in play. But then there are those moments, there are those seasons when it becomes in play all the more magnified like when we go to make huge decisions as a people. Whatever happens, whatever happens, God is God. What God is looking for, more than who gets elected to any particular office or what, what uh, propositions or initiatives get selected or not selected, I believe what God is looking for is that His people are the salt and light declaring and reflecting His heart to a dark and dying world. I uh, picked up the paper this morning, went out early and grabbed my coffee and as I always do of a morning, grabbed the paper. And <clears throat> on, uh, there was a full page ad on one of the sections uh, with a picture of Billy Graham and it's a, it was a message from Reverend Billy Graham. And I thought, yeah, yeah, that, that kind of that says it. Dr. Graham says this, vote biblical values. Tuesday, November the 6th. The legacy that we leave behind for our children and grandchildren in this great nation is crucial. As I approach my 94th birthday, I realize this election could be my last, and I believe it's vitally important that we cast our ballots for candidates who base their decisions on biblical principles, support the nation of Israel. I urge you to vote for those who protect the sanctity of life, Support biblical definition of marriage. Vote for biblical values that reflect God this November 6th. And pray with me that America will remain one nation under God. Billy Graham. So, it's time to vote. It's time to vote. And my heart, my prayer is that you, in the next 48 hours, if you haven't already done so, will do everything you can to make sure that when that opportunity comes on Tuesday, that you can be the salt and the light that God has commissioned you and me to be. And if we'll do that, whatever happens, whatever happens, God will still be God. God will still be sovereign. And we will have declared His sovereignty by virtue of, of our influence and our effectiveness and our declaration that God is God. Pray with me. God, thank you for your word and your heart and, and that, wow, you put us, you chose that we would be a part of um, this people, this, this nation that is so honored, so privileged to, to, to be able to make choices and make selections about our leadership and the directions of, uh, of our of our nation and so uh, will you take your words overrule my inabilities and my inadequacies this morning and and communicating your heart to us that we would truly see w what a big deal this is to you and how how important it was that we get the message we get the understanding as your followers that we are your avenue 
for declaring your light to a dark world, for, for invading the hardness and the coldness of our land and those who are far from you with the salt of your word and of your ways and of your heart, that we truly are one nation under God. And so here we are, God. We're your people. Give us wisdom. We just ask you to give us wisdom in this next 48 hours that we can be effective salt and light for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Just stand together with me. I ask the band. Uh, you know, as we finish up this song, uh, he, finish up this time th together, here's what I want to do. I just want to focus on God as God. <laughs> and we're going to do all, everything we can to be salt and light, but at the end of the day, God is God. And uh, in the good times and the bad times, if things go our way, probably it'll be a mixed bag on Wednesday morning. You're probably going to be doing some, ha some celebrating, and you're probably going to be doing some, some crying, maybe. I don't know. It, there's going to be a mixed bag, and at the end of the day, God will be God. And we'll continue to be His people salt and light to the world. So in declaration of God and celebration of who He is, sing this with the band.
storm, oh God. You never let go And every high is every low, no You never let go, Lord, you never let go Amen. I'll tell you what, I said this at the end of the first hour. God always knows. It's amazing. He always knows what you need to experience and what you need to hear. And I said this again. I said, you know, even this morning as we were sitting there watching TV and drinking coffee, getting ready to go to church, there's political ads on. I put it on mute and I said to myself, I think you even said this to Hammy, I am so sick of this stuff and I can't wait for it to be over. Thank you, Mike, for the reminder. And thank you, God, for the reminder. Uh, that we are to be a light of this world and salt of this earth. And we have uh, such a responsibility as Christ followers. So I hope you've been blessed today. I hope you've been challenged today. God bless you and you are dismissed.